Lucy Stone was an American woman who was an early advocate of anti-slavery and the women's rights movement. She's also known as the first woman to decline taking up her husband's name after marriage. In a world of misogyny and prejudice, women like Lucy Stone have adamantly refused to just stay quiet and watch women continue to be treated unfairly in society. Rather, Stone dedicated her life to making sure that women in America were given their due rights and fair opportunities. Today we're going to be learning more about the remarkable American woman, Lucy Stone. Born on August 13, 1818, in rural Massachusetts to Frances and Hannah Matthew Stone, Lucy Stone's parents were local farmers from New England. Being that her ancestors were revolutionaries themselves, Lucy Stone, who was raised in a congregational church, also embraced their anti-slavery campaign. Also, seeing the way that women were relegated to the background and denied certain rights like the right to education, Lucy Stone, at the age of 16, began to work as a teacher to save up for school, but unfortunately, that dream was dashed at the instance of her sister's illness as she had to drop out from Mount Holyoke in 1939 after just one semester there. Now to realize her dreams and aspirations, Lucy Stone attended Oberlin College in Ohio. Yet she wasn't permitted to explore her interest in public speaking in spite of its progressive nature. This prompted her to decline the honor of writing the commencement speech at her graduation that was to be delivered by a man so yeah she was asked to write the commencement speech but she wasn't allowed to give like to deliver her own speech so she was like no there's no way i'm going to do that like if you don't let me deliver my own speech then i'm not going to write it yeah tough lady by reason of the few career prospects open to women at the time, Lucy Stone took advantage of the employment opportunity offered to her by abolitionist Williams Lloyd Garrison. There she utilized the opportunity of writing and delivering abolitionist speeches for his American Anti-Slavery Society and also at the same time got busy with the women's rights movement activities which unavoidably um, got her lots of interest insults and assaults. But she was persistent. She didn't let all that to deter her. Rather, this made her more popular and eventually she started earning more than her male, you know, lecturer counterparts. Yeah. In her lifetime, Lucy Stone set two precedents. The first one was in 1850. That was two years after the Seneca Falls women's rights movement where she organized the first women's rights convention in Worcester, Massachusetts. There she gave an impactful speech, which was later reprinted in the international press. For five years, Stone traveled throughout the US and Canada on sensitization and continuously attended annual women's rights convention until she proceeded over the seventh one. The second was in 1858, where she reminded Americans of the no taxation without representation principle. She refused to pay property taxes and was punished by the impoundment and sale of her household goods. At the end of the Civil War, she worked on the referendum for suffrage in Kansas. She also served as president of the New Jersey Women's Suffrage Association and helped organize the New England Association in which she remained active even after her family moved to Boston in 1869. There she served side by side on the executive committee of the American Equal Rights Association. Even in her marriage, which was blessed with two girls, with one of her daughters you know, following after her footsteps, Lucy believed in the equality of a man and his wife. This was also the reason behind her decision to retain her maiden name after marriage, making her the first woman 
ever to do so. Obviously, her decision to do this gave her a lot of criticism, but today she's forever going to be referred to as the first woman to boldly refuse taking up her husband's last name after marriage. Lucy Stone lived her life fighting alongside other remarkable women for the rights of women in America, to see women given their rightful places in society. She died on October 18, 1893 in Boston, Massachusetts at the age of 75. And that is the brief history of the life of Lucy Stone, the remarkable American abolitionist, suffragist, and a women's rights activist. If you'd like to watch more videos like this, I have so much more you could go through on the playlist. Please do help yourself and do have a lovely day. Bye-bye.